God is great and greatly to be praised. Happy New Year, C.N. Jenkins members and friends. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We are glad that you are joining us this morning on Facebook Live and YouTube for this worship experience. We bid you God's joy this Sabbath day. We thank God so much for all of those who are part of this service today to Pastor Lanson uh, and her leadership. We thank God for our musicians, Dr. Monroe, and the wonderful uh, sounds to which you hear uh, each and every Sunday. We're grateful for all of those who prepare to bring their very best to you in worship. To our AV team, our Centurions, our COVID-19 team to make sure the church is safe, we are so grateful and appreciative. And most importantly to you who are viewing right now, we are, we are so kind, we, you are so kind to join us. And in so we want to go right to the word as we start off our new year uh, with the truth. If you have your word, I invite you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter 6. We'll be reading verses 19, 20, and 21 from an NIV translation. And this is what the word of God says. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And this morning, for a brief moment, I want to focus on verse 21 of this passage, for it may be familiar to some, it may be new to others, but I want you to hear what the word says. It says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if we could, I want to lift up this text and for a moment preach on our subject today, take it to the bank, take it to the bank. My friends, the late author and public speaker Zig Ziglar had a quote that simply said, you can have anything in this world you want as long as you're willing to help enough other people get what they want. And this statement, y'all, was not to be done in a manipulative way, not to be done in the sense of abuse of power, not to be done in condescending way, or not to be done with malfeasance or discontent. But what Zig Ziglar was saying in this statement, y'all, was really a principle taken from the Bible. And that principle is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What Zig Ziglar was saying, y'all, was a basic principle to which I believe that all solid foundations are made. And that is that not only can you have what you want, but if you're humble enough to help enough other people get what they want, then you will be blessed. I think it was C.S. Lewis that says, if you aim for heaven, you'll get everything. But if you aim for earth, you get nothing. You see, what we want to look at today, my friends, is really about making decisions. And, and, and making decisions are critical for all of us. Many of us cannot go throughout the day without making a decision. And I thank God that God has given me strength and given you ability to make solid decisions. Decisions are a part of our everyday life. Decisions about what to eat and how to eat properly. Decisions about drinking plenty of water. We make decisions, y'all, about taking our medicines, all of our medicines, with a meal. Decisions, y'all, about where to, to wear a mask, to stay back six feet, and to wash our hands. We make decisions, y'all, about to drive without seat belts and to drive under the speed limit and also to stop, not roll through those stop signs. Somebody say amen. And some of you right now are making decisions, even as you watch me on YouTube and Facebook, you are deciding, should I get up and go get some cereal? Should I pause right now and swipe to somebody else's sermon? You are making the decision right now. Should I wake Boo up and tell him to come on and watch the sermon? There ain't no need of laying in the bed this first Sunday of the year. All you got to do is roll over and just watch. We are making decisions, y'all. As we start the new year, we're making decisions, decisions beginning to start exercising and stop procrastinating. Somebody say amen. 
to start eating better and stop smoking, to, to the start taking responsibilities and stop making excuses, to start telling the truth and stop lying, to stop, start grilling your food and stop smoking weed, to start saving money and stop spending beyond your means. Come on, help me preach this Sunday morning. We all make decisions. And some of the decisions we make in life, y'all, are easy, but some come with a little more effort needed. And the way that I've found that you make good decisions is to have your priorities in space. But where can we find priorities? I, I like the way that Stephen Covey says. He says that the key to, is not to prioritize what's on your schedule. The key is to schedule your priorities. Jim Rowan, that great speaker, said it this way. He says, you cannot make progress without making decisions. Former President Theodore Roosevelt, I like the way he said it. He says, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do uh, is the right thing. The, the next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing is to do nothing. Stephen Covey, again, the author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he said it this way. He says, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. And you see, I want you to understand for the next several weeks, the next several sermons, we're going to be talking about making decisions. Decisions, I believe, that would help us live a stronger or more positive and a more wholesome life. For it was Jim Craig Groeschel said it me, many years ago. He says, the decisions you make today determines the story you tell on tomorrow. And so I want us to make good decisions in 2021. I want us to make solid decisions that affect not just our lives, but add value to the lives of those around us. And the reason I, I've called this sermon, you can take it to the bank because I believe if you make some decisions based on the word of Almighty God, you can bank on that. Somebody type, I know that's right, right there. If, if you make decisions that are, that are Holy Ghost filled and decisions that are anointed with the word of Almighty God, you can take that to the bank. And what I'm saying by taking it to the bank, y'all, I want us to go straight to the gospel of Matthew because from here we find Jesus and his teaching, Minister Donna, on the Sermon on the Mount. Luke calls it the Sermon on the Plain. And I believe if Dave Chappelle was around, he would have called it the Sermon in the Hood. But nevertheless, y'all, Jesus is dropping some major instruction. He is talking about choices and he's talking about us making decisions about life on the here and the life to come. For the scripture tells us, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And you see, my friends, I want you to get the, this scripture to, to really understand there are two words that are repeated over and over again, Dr. Monroe, in this text that I believe that stand out and it really gives us the message for this message. The first word is treasure. Can you just type treasure right there in the text box? Try, but just give some voice to treasure. And, and you see, the, I don't want you to run too quickly to the content that you forget to context because what I found as I researched this the good Reverend Max says is that our treasures that Jesus is talking about y'all are not necessarily material possessions but instead it is an orientation to the things that we let our lives evolve around let me give you that again, Brother L. I don't think they got it. Our treasure, our treasure, y'all, that Jesus is talking about are not necessarily material possessions, but instead it is the orientation of the things that we let our lives evolve around. 
See, those are our treasures, the things that we plan our day, our week, our month, and even our year around. Those are our treasures, the things that capture our attention. I, I'm talking about the things, y'all, that wake us up early in the morning and keep us up late at night. Those things that, y'all, that we invest in, we build our lives around. Let me, let me explain it to you in the words of Reverend Mack. He says is that as he read the autobiography of Arnold Schwarzenegger, he says that at the beginning of the year, this great actor would write down his goals and put them on a card. And the goals, y'all, were simply the things that would guide him and direct him throughout the year. Those, tre those goals became his treasures. And I'm looking at somebody here this morning. I don't want you to miss the fact that God is saying that you have to be careful that those things that control your life and control your thoughts and control your energy and control your being, make sure those things are heavenly bound and not earthly bound. Because a whole lot of us, y'all, are, are heavenly bound, but we ain't no earthly good. You see, what the text is helping us realize, y'all, that the single focus of somebody like a Arnold Schwarzenegger, y'all, is really aligned back to his priorities. And when we get our priorities in proper order, we will control things rather than things controlling us. When we get our priorities in order, we will make sure our mind is here and not on there. Come on, gin and juice. Help me out, Snoop Dogg. My mind's on my money and my money's on my mind. Get your mind right. Okay, you didn't get that old school. Help me out, OJs. Your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. Get your priorities right. And when you get your priorities right, you can understand the first point I want to lift up here from the Gospel of Matthew is that Jesus gives us command not to be selfish. Can you type right there in the chat box, don't be selfish, don't, don't be selfish. Why are you saying that, Reverend? He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust uh, uh, destroy and where thieves break in and steal. You see, the word store up, what I found here, Minister Donna, it is the root word for the, it is the sarios. And that is the root word found in verse 19 for our English word translated, Dr. Monroe, the saros. And we all know what a thesaurus is. It is basically a storehouse of word, a depository of words. It is a dictionary of words. And the thesaurus, y'all, is an image that we have to understand in our modern day language that Jesus is commanding us not to store up things here on earth like we're putting them into a thesaurus and going to get them back for later on. Jesus was commanding his his listeners not to be selfish but to be generous not to be stingy but to be charitable not to be not holding on to yourself hoarders but to be gracious Jesus was saying in essence be kind be, be, be kind in your life. Be kind with your words. Be kind with your spirit and be kind in your living. You see, if, if we will look carefully at the words of Jesus in the text, we will see that he's saying, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. And the issue that Jesus was really talking about, y'all, he was saying that the problem was not that we have things, but the problem is sometimes things have us. Oh, let me back up and say that again. Jesus was addressing, y'all, that the issue in life is not for us to not have things. He was really saying that, we, that things should never have us. Many of us are worshiping the creature and not the creator. Many of us are worshiping stuff and not the Holy Spirit. Many of us are guided by our things and our things have us and we don't have almighty God. And the fallacy or the problem here, y'all, is when things have you and you don't have God, then your focus will never be on God. It will always be on things. I like that because what it helped me understand 
understand, Brother David, is that the pandemic has helped me realize that the things to which I used to worship, the things to which I used to think were essential, the things to which were govern my lives, the pandemic has told me that I can still go to church with my pajama bottoms on. I can still worship God in my living room. I can still serve the Lord and I don't have to drive 15 miles to get here. The good news of the word of Almighty God when my focus is on, okay, let me see if I can help you understand this. Jesus was teaching y'all that when we stockpile stuff for ourselves, we are basically making an announcement to the thieves to come on in and help yourself. Think about it. All the stuff that we have and all the material possessions that we get, Brother George, we're telling people who don't have it to come get it. Think about the boat that's in your front yard that you don't even use. You're telling things, people to come. <laughs> I don't know if you got a boat, Brother George, but people telling people to come and get your boat. Think about your big picture glass window that people can look through and see your 72-inch television. You're telling folk to come in and help yourself. Think about all the things to which we put out for the thieves to come in and understand when Jesus says they break in, he is saying it, Dr. Monroe, in the present tense. Break in means they keep on coming and keep on coming and keep on coming. And we have to recognize, my friends, when we store up things for ourselves, treasures here on earth, moth and rust and thieves will help themselves. But the good news is that the one thing that cannot be taken away is the word of almighty God. Come on, help me preach right there because somebody knows right now that when you have given your life to the Lord and the Lord is taking control of your life, it does not matter what moth or rust or thieves will try to do. You can't take away my Jesus. You can't take away my Lord. You can't take away my commitment to be a believer in the word of almighty God. And for that, my friends, I can't help but to say you can bank on that you can bank on the truth that weeping endures for the night but joy comes in the morning you can bank on that the fact that God says I will never leave you nor forsake you you can bank on that the bank on the truth that anything you need in the name of Jesus the word says that our Savior will go to the Father and on your behalf plead your case you can bank on fact that Jesus says I am the truth I I am the way. I am the life. You can bank on that to believe the Bible says that I am the vine. You are the branches cut off from me. You can do nothing. You can bank on the fact that Jesus is coming back. And when he's coming back, he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. You can bank on that, that all things are possible to those that believe. And the good news, my friends, as we start the new year, I want you to take it to the bank. Take the word of God to the bank that anything that you need, anything you desire, anything you're looking for, you can bank on the word of God to see you through. Amen. See the good news, the good news y'all is that you have to recognize that, that life, life is more about making a living. I like the way Dr. Maya Angelou says it. She says, I've learned that making a living is not the same thing as making a life. I've learned that whenever I decide something with an open heart, I usually make the right decisions. You see, when we think about making our treasures in heaven and not on earth, we have to make the right decisions. The second point I want to lift up from this text, my friends, I don't want you to miss it, is that Jesus says, I give a command for you to store up treasures in heaven. What is the word says? But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys where thieves break in and steal. You see, verse 19 of the text, Jesus was saying, don't store up things. Now he's saying, do store up things. Don't miss that. Jesus says in verse 19, don't. In verse 20, he's saying, do. You see, what we need to recognize in these 
these three little verses of, of this Sermon on the Mount that our Lord is saying that if we store up things here on earth, they will be destroyed. But if we store up things in heaven, they will last forever. You see, the idea to which Jesus again is promoting is that the treasures in heaven are things that will last forever. Let me see if I can illustrate this to you. I don't know if you know the name Chuck Feeney. Chuck Feeney, y'all, is not like Warren Buffett or Bill Gates or one of those uh, great billionaires that you hear about who are great philanthropists. But Chuck Feeney, y'all, really started the way. Matter of fact, he got Warren Buffett and Bill Gates to sign the letter that they would give away their fortunes. You see, Chuck Feeney made his profits, y'all, on those duty-free shops, the duty-free shops that you go to when you're coming back from Jamaica or coming back from the Virgin Islands and you don't want to pay taxes on your stuff, that, that, that's Chuck Feeney's shop. And what he did, y'all, he started selling, selling alcohol of all things to servicemen in Hawaii and servicemen in, in the foreign countries. That, and he started, that was his business, but he decided to give away all of his fortune. Chuck Feeney, y'all, had $6.2 billion and it was his goal not to die penniless, but to give away his fortune. He said to the billionaires of America, don't wait till you die before you give your money away. Give it now. Am I talking to some billionaires right now looking at me? Okay, you're not billion yet, but you are million, so don't be hating on me. Okay, you're not millionaires yet, but you, are, you do have some money. Don't wait till you die to give it away. Give it away right now, because I've done enough funerals, and I've been enough families that though you may not think they ain't going to argue over your money, okay, though you may think they're going to be real civil over your estate, if you really want it to go where you want it to go, you better give it now. You see, Chuck Feeney helped me understand is that you can't take it with you. So here's what the good news is. On September the 14th of last year, Chuck Feeney gave away all of his $6.2 billion to charities. And y'all, here's what he says that I really want you to check out. He says, if we want to obtain heavenly treasures, we must be ready to make sacrifices. Sacrifices. If you want to attain heavenly treasures, if you want to build your treasures up in heaven, you must make some earthly sacrifices. Now, don't miss this because some of us are trying to hold on to every little penny and dime that we have. And I found a quote that I ought to give to you. It says, the richer you get, the more people will help you spend your money. The richer you get, the more people will come around you to help you spend your money. You see, when you make decisions, then I'm not building up my treasures on earth, but building them up in heaven, you will recognize that the more I give, guess what? The more God gives back to me. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I don't know who I'm talking to this Sabbath day, this first Sunday of the new year, but I want you to have a spirit of giving and generosity. I want you to give your time, your talent, your tithe, your, okay, as well as, as your being. I want you to give your very best. I want you to be all in. Because you see, the Bible also implies it's not just thieves and moth and rust that sometimes will take our treasure. Sometimes we can be thieves and moth and rust, and we can be so condescending and so stingy and such a bad person that we don't, in, we don't infect, shall we say, good folk with our good spirit. And the Bible is clear, crystal clear to tell us, my friends, is that we have to put our treasures in heaven and not on earth. Let me see if I can close because I want you to get this last point because what the Bible is saying to us, my friends, that the reason we must store up treasures treasures in heaven because they will be with us. What? That's where our heart will be. You see, the word heart used in this text, y'all, in the scripture, it refers to the seat 
the seat of our personality. It is where we make our decisions. The word hearts refers to the seat, the place of our personality. It is where the heart is. I like the way David says it in Psalm 51, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create me a clean heart in my heart, in my gut. You see, that's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. We've got to trust God with our heart. Verse 21 of the text tells us, Jesus gives us a reason for storing up our possession. Jesus teaches that our love will follow our treasure. The heart of a person, the heart will follow the place where that person has their treasures. Where your heart is, your treasure will be also. And the challenge and the invitation, my friends, is that we will have a heart for God. And when we have a heart for God, our treasures will follow our heart. The decisions we make today determines the story we tell on tomorrow. And I want to give this invitation to somebody this Sunday to have a decision to follow God. Somebody this Sunday to start the year off right and to go ahead and type in the chat box, I need to be a part of a church. Now, you've been saying when the church opens up again, I'm going to come back to church. Don't worry about when it opens. Here's your open invitation on this Sunday that you will have an open heart to follow the Lord. Let me see if I can close by sharing an interesting story with you. I don't know if you remember seeing the movies Ace Ventura or, or, or Liar, Liar, Patch Adams. I don't know if you remember seeing the movies Evan Almighty or Bruce Almighty, but maybe The Nutty Professor. You see, these movies, y'all, were written and directed by a young man by the name of Tom Sadaki. And Tom Sadaki, a graduate of University of Virginia in the UCLA a film school, he, he walked away from all of his Hollywood fame because he realized that that was not where peace was. That was not where salvation was. That was not where satisfaction was. Tom Sadaki, who is an executive producer, a writer, a director, a Hollywood mongol, this, this gentleman walked away a devout Catholic who's reading works like Morton and Augustine. Tom, Tom Siddiqui says, that's not where my peace comes from. He says, in essence, if you sow an apple seed, you can't expect to get avocados. He says that the consequences of your life are sown in what you do and how you behave. He's really pushing y'all my, my whole point about decisions and I want you to hear what Tom says about decisions because the decisions that he has made to write, move, write scripts and to produce movies were not really about what other folk have said. He, he says it this way, he says, somebody asked him the other day, uh, what's the biggest influence of your filmmaking career? And they started naming filmmakers, he says. And he went, no. Nah, it ain't none of that. It's Jesus Almighty. You see, that's what I want us to get to today, that somehow we can recognize that making a decision to follow the Lord is really what's going to take us through 2021. God's joy, God's love, God's blessings, and God's peace, because this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. We love you. See you next week.